Hello my viewers. Here's part two of control transformers. I want you to realize that even if your line voltage or your primary voltage on the control transformer is 208 and if you put it on the 240 tap, chances are it's still going to work. But the problem is, is it's not going to work very well. You're going to have problems probably down the line sometime where your contactors and relays and boards will start to fail because it's not getting enough coil voltage. When you see this sticker you might want to take it serious. Okay right now I have a transformer here that's a 100 VA and the primary of course is adjustable uh, from 120 volts to 208 volts 240 volts or 480 volts uh, and the secondary voltage is 24 volts. I selected this 100 VA transformer mainly because uh, this system that it's connected to actually controls all four of these condensing units plus the two air handlers that's inside of the building. Now to explain a little bit more about what I was talking about in my last control transformers video, I'm going to show you what the uh, control voltage is right now uh, while I have the primary connected to 208 on the 208 side. I'm going to connect here to common, okay, and to to the uh, 24 volts side and as you can see I'm getting 27 point something okay now that's about what you're gonna see generally when you're connected on the 208 side see even though the line voltage right here is 208 volts now you're gonna see two 14 or maybe even 211 or something like that usually uh, in this case it's 214 something naturally this is three phase which means that it's is connected to a Y transformer now what I'm going to do is I'll switch to the 240 volt tap on the control transformer now I'm going to connect to the 240 volt side which is the orange wire See right now I'm connected to the red, which is 208, but just to show you uh, what will happen when you do that, I'll make that okay. change. Okay, I went ahead and connected to uh, the orange wire right here on the primary side of this control transformer. Now we'll take a reading from common to our uh, 24 volt side. Okay, see now we're getting like 23 point nine something but the thing is is because this um, thermostat wire is about 200 feet long and it just goes every which way down there and connects to a whole bunch of different contactors and relays this much voltage is not going to cut it once it gets to the air handlers matter of fact uh, it'll be more like 20 volts so that would shorten the life of your relays and boards and everything. Okay, now I'm inside the air handler here and I'm checking out to see what the volts are on the control side. Right now I'm getting like 25 point something. Now the reason that I'm only getting 25 instead of the 27 something that I was getting nearest to the control transformer is because of the line loss. Because this thermostat wire is about 200 feet at least, uh, you're going to have some voltage drop. If I put the primary uh, voltage on the 240 volt tap, I would only have about 20 volts. And it's very important to keep your voltage up above 24 volts in order to uh, keep from losing the, your coils on the contactors and relays and boards and things. Right now, I'm um, just showing you the inside of this heat kit in this air handler. So you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
three, four contactors, and there's uh, four of them on each air handler. So, you know, they, you get a lot. That's another reason for having a 100 VA control transformer. Also, one thing I wanted to explain, I've got a few people emailing me asking me to do a video on the EPA rules. I guess it's because you're wanting to get your EPA certification and that's great. Uh, naturally, rule number one is thou shalt not vent, meaning don't let refrigerant just into the atmosphere, okay, that's a bad thing. And beyond that, uh, passing the EPA certification is going to be a matter of memorizing a bunch of dates, things like that, okay. But you also really need to know the job. Your best bet is to study the study guide and practically memorize it because it's hard to say what questions you'll be asked. One thing too is that there are three different certifications. There's type 1 certification which doesn't really let you do very much. It's basically a joke. Um, I don't even know why they have it. Type 2 certification will of course allow you to work on just about anything that your type 3 or universal will allow you to work on it with the exception of say some large chill water systems that take a lot of refrigerant. So study the guide and I wish you well.